Hi everyone. Today, I have the pleasure to welcome as our guest, one of the panelists from the launch of the Global Innovation Index 2022 edition, Alina Bux. Alina is president of the German Ethics Council and professor of ethics in medicine and health technologies at the Technical University of Munich. She has played a key role in advising the German government on ethical questions related to innovative new technologies. Today, we will be tapping into her expertise in ethics and the social acceptance of new breakthrough technologies. Welcome, Elena. Hello, Vanessa. So nice to see you. Nice that you join us today. So, you joined us for the launch of the Global Innovation Index 2022 to underline the importance of social acceptance in releasing the full potential of new innovative waves, such as the deep science wave and the digital age wave. What role does ethics play in social acceptance of these new technologies and widespread adoption thereof? So I think there's, there's two ways to answer that question. The first is that um, ethics can help point us in a substantive way um, towards making these technologies or developing these technologies um, towards creating good for individuals, for groups, for populations. So ethics gives you a substantive framework to test if your innovations, for example, might have unintended or problematic or unethical consequences. So that is sort of the deep answer. Um, it forces you, if you will, um, to make your product, to make your innovation the best it can be, to make it good in a substantive way. And this is the ideal. I'm very aware of the fact that that doesn't always happen. And the second answer is the one about social acceptance. Um, it's not just a superficial thing that people actually accept the types of innovations that we will be seeing in the coming decades. If we don't have social acceptance, technology does not get adopted or it doesn't get adopted well. And so one has to think through both of these levels, the more substantive one, how do I actually make the innovation as good as possible on the one hand, but also how can I develop it in a way, how can I also shape that process in a way that then makes the technology, the innovation acceptable to as many people as possible. Do you have specific examples of uh, where social acceptance has been a key role in uh, widespread adoption of a new technology or even a, a barrier? Well, there are two a very interesting example. One is, is a bit of a historical example, and that is the so-called Frankenfood. So GMO technology used um, on foodstuffs. Um, in my own country, in Germany, um, there was widespread worry in the media, in the public arena, um, and a lot of um, very negative uh, impressions of this technology um, without a deep understanding necessarily what it meant and also the potentials of that technology. So there was a huge emphasis on the risks, almost an exclusive emphasis. And there has been a lot of research on this time because what happened was that the regulation that then came about, also the European regulation was influenced by the German response to this technology, which was very restrictive, very risk oriented. And there are some um, social scientists and political scientists who have shown that you can sort of see the pathway from the lack of social understanding and social acceptance to very restrictive regulation, which some scientists and researchers say has really hampered very socially beneficial developments of this technology. So that is one very well-known example. A more positive example, even though it's also a very controversial technology, is the CRISPR-Cas breakthrough. Surely one of the biggest innovations we have seen in medicine and the life sciences in the last decades, uh, which has already been awarded 
very rightly so, the Nobel Prize. Uh, and Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna, the two inventors of this technology, the main inventors of this technology, did something very, very smart. They discussed ethical and social implications very early on, almost from the very beginning. They invited ethicists, social scientists, political scientists, many, many stakeholders very early on to comment on sort of what could be done with this technology and what the implications could be for individual people, but also for the whole world. Um, and that started a process of debating this technology in societies quite publicly uh, that has led also, of course, to many international bodies such as WHO and others to engage with this technology, but it has fostered a better, I think, understanding and also a certain degree of openness and social acceptance towards this technology. It certainly isn't as one-sided as we have seen in the past. And because technologies should never be looked at just from one side, because they have the potential to do both good and bad. That's exactly what we need to do as societies when we are considering innovations. That's a very interesting point you make. Straight away, I can think of uh, this idea of embedding um, ethics in technological development uh, that you also mentioned in one of your papers. So what um, specifically in your paper, it's about uh, health, uh, artificial intelligence in health. And I think you make recommendations on uh, how to embed ethics. So could you just explain to me what, um, what that means? Why is it a good thing? Yes, thank you very much. That's something that we're developing at Technical University in Munich. And it really isn't rocket science, first of all. It, it also isn't something entirely new. So anybody who has worked on the LC framework, ethical, legal, and social implications of research, for example, will be very familiar with what we're doing. Um, what we are emphasizing, though, is that it needs to be a process that starts immediately, very, very early on, and that accompanies the entire development pathway. Um, practically speaking, what it means is get an ethics person involved and make them part of the development team. And that ethics person then is able not only to interrogate the entire process and sort of be present and anticipate um, ethical or social implications of a technology and then contribute to design decisions, for example, or even coding decisions if it's about algorithms, but also that ethics person will be able to contribute all the work that has already been done on the ethics of technology development, bring to the table all the frameworks, um, sort of all the checklists there are, all the tools that have been developed, for example, in um, algorithmic um, ethics on how to make sure that algorithms don't um, enshrine biases that are, for example, present in training data, these kinds of things. So very practical things that help the development team not to make um, the obvious ethics mistakes and to anticipate and ideally solve any ethical issues that are not as obvious. And the goal of this, so why we do this is of course that we want these innovations. Um, and if we're speaking about AI in health, where we are in a very, very sensitive area, um, potentially um, developing um, innovations that will be used with very vulnerable people, we must make sure um, that we don't develop technologies that have the ethical problems that we have seen. So we do know that there is a potential that such technologies might have some problematic implications. And that particularly in the healthcare sector, but of course everywhere else as well, needs to be avoided. And that is the idea be behind this embedded ethics approach, which really is a very integrated way to be part of the development pathway from the beginning until the very end. So what we often see is that technological advancements and capabilities are actually way ahead of what is uh, being used in practice 
in society. And health AI is uh, one area where this is particularly important and also um, prominent, and you're also an expert in health AI. So there's a lot of potential in health AI. Um, we're already seeing the benefits of more accurate uh, and earlier diagnosis, uh, which can be a game changer for health decisions, but also adopting health AI in um, wearable wearables, um, such as smartwatches, uh, can really open the path to personalized uh, treatments. What uh, are the next kind of big wave um, health-related, health artificial intelligence technologies that are coming our way? Well, on, at the experimental level, it's, it's such an exciting time currently. Um, but I think the next wave will be the actual translation of these tools into the clinic. And most of these will be diagnostic. So most of these tools will help doctors make better, more precise diagnoses or help them when treating. And these technologies will take over tasks that used to be done by doctors only. Uh, so we've seen the first system that can, for example, that has been certified in the European um, Union for actual clinical use that can diagnose um, uh, a chest X-ray um, completely independently. Um, and of course, now the question is, how do we use that responsibly? Do we really t keep doctors out of the picture completely? And most ethicists, myself included, agree that we should have blended um, decision making where doctors are in the loop and are, remain um, as decision makers. Um, but the other part is also that we have uh, systems um, that are embodied, for example, with robotic uh, interfaces that can help operate uh, very precisely uh, on people. And I could go on. There is so much coming. Um, the pipeline is very, very broad. Um, but the real push will be to get that from the experimental stage into wide adoption. And there we have a lot to do. We have doctors that are really still very wary um, of these applications and technologies that are necessarily always very tax savvy. We have patients who might be reluctant. Some are very happy. Um, we, there's plenty of studies showing that, that patients do trust these systems quite well on the one hand, but on the other, of course, they do want their doctor in the room. So we have to solve so many issues from, ranging from data protection and of course, what we've already talked about, um, the algorithmic challenges up to how to certify these things for wider clinical use. And now I've only talked about the stuff that is coming into the actual medical field. Obviously, there's a huge dimension um, out there. There are so many applications outside of the established um, professional medical arena. Um, and that's another field. Um, and there, I think um, we need to empower people to better understand what is it that, for example, my psychology chatbot app does with me? What can it do? What can't it do? What are the limits um, of these applications? Um, and I think there is still quite a bit of um, joint learning to be done. Precisely. Um, before we come to an end, do you have any final uh, recommendations you would like to highlight in terms of um, ethics and social acceptance in the context of future innovation waves? Yes, I would very much like to stress that it needn't be something that one is afraid of and it doesn't have to be sort of this ethics police kind of stuff. If you consider it from the beginning, it will make innovation better. Ethics is not against innovation, on the contrary. Ethically responsible innovation is the, is the best innovation there is. And I believe that there is no opposition between those who say, who are excited about innovation and technology development and those who want ethically responsible innovation. I think it's the same thing. And any innovation that ignores social and ethical implications is just bad. So I would say be good. I mean, be good 
because that's your own interest. You will have the best innovation. You will have the best product and you will make the most money on top of it too. So there are very clear, um, um, there's very clear evidence that economically speaking, ethically responsible innovation really makes sense as well. Um, but also looking at the wider picture, um, I believe um, if we do want to coexist on this planet uh, in a good way, um, possibly beyond our own life, um, the only way to do that is to have ethically responsible innovation. Thank you so much, Elena. Thank you for your time and for these really interesting insights. I wish you all the best in the endeavor of embedding ethics in our technological developments. And I hope to hear from you soon. It was lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Take care. Well, that was a mind-opening conversation with Professor Alena Bux, the president of the German Ethics Council. What are your biggest ethical concerns in future breakthrough technologies? Leave your thoughts in the comments or give this video a like. If you've made it this far and are not yet subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button now and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.